Lesson number four. The title is, Does God Change? Does God Change? Remember, we are studying here the only one road and one map to safety. That is God's road map to everlasting life. The law of God is unchangeable. That's what the Bible says. Here are some texts that I'd like to share with you. First one is Psalms 90 verse 2. God is an everlasting God. Malachi 3.6 He never changes. James 1.17 Not a shadow of change. Psalms 19.7 Because His law is perfect, He doesn't have to change it. Romans 7.12 His law is holy, good, and just. Psalms 111.7-8 No reason to change and all of them are done in truth and uprightness. Psalms 146.10 This makes God's government perfect because it is unchanging. The law of God is unchangeable. Christ is one with the Father. That's in John 10.30 He is also unchanging as the Father. Hebrews 13.8 he did, God did not, Jesus did not come to change the law or destroy it. Matthew 5, 17-19 He came to make it honorable. Isaiah 42, 21 He came to show us how to obey it. Psalms 40, verse 8 He did not sin. Sin is disobedience or disobeying God's law. 1 John 3, 4 1 Peter 2, 22 we are to follow the examples of Jesus Christ of obedience. Hebrews 4.15, 1 Peter 2.21. Paul followed Christ, 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. If we love Christ, we will obey His commandments, John 14.21. These are not His, but the Father's, John 12.49 and 50. John said, that the proof that we love God is willing obedience. First John 5, 3. The law of God will be the test in the day of judgment. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. The law of God is unchangeable. The law of God, King of Kings, James 2, 10 to 12. The word of God will stand forever. Isaiah 40, verse 8. My word shall not pass away. Matthew 24, 35. The scripture cannot be broken. John 10, 35. God's word is living and powerful. Hebrews 4, 12. Not one just must be removed or changed. Matthew 5, 17 to 18. Does God really see and take note of me personally? According to Genesis sixteen thirteen, thou uh, thou God seest me. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down and my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou art acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord. Thou knowest it altogether. Psalms 139, 1 to 4. But even the very hairs of your hair are all numbered. That's found in Luke 12, 7. Can I be saved in his kingdom without obeying his word as found in the Holy Bible? According to Matthew 7, 21. If thou wilt enter into life, Keep the commandments. Matthew 19, uh, 17. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Hebrews 5, 9. The answer is no. Scriptures is very clear in this point. 
Salvation and the kingdom of heaven are for those who obey the Lord's commands. God does not promise eternal salvation to those who merely make a profession of faith or are church members or are baptized, but rather to those who do His will, which is revealed in the Scriptures. Of course, disobedience is possible only through Jesus. Why does God require obedience? Why is it necessary? Because he straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Matthew 7, 24. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death, according to Proverbs 8, 36. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive. Deuteronomy 6.24 Because there is only one narrow path that leads to Godlikeness, and thus to his kingdom, all roads do not lead to the same place. The Bible is the map and guidebook with full instructions, warnings, and information on how to safely reach that kingdom. To disregard any part of it leads away from God and his kingdom. Why does God permit disobedience to continue? Why not destroy sin and sinners now? Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of the saints, of his saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Jude 14.15 As I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Romans 14.11 he, he, he has designated a time when he will just do that. Execute judgment at one time for everyone. God permits disobedience and sin to continue until all people everywhere are all are last fully convinced of God's justice, love, and mercy. All will finally realize that God, by requiring obedience, is not trying to force His will upon us, but rather is trying to keep us from hurting and destroying ourselves. You see, Satan has convinced so many people and so God cannot just destroy everyone. He has to give a chance for everyone to be able to realize that they have sinned against God. But if they do not realize that, if they do not seek the Lord, if they do not study, then of course, when He executes execute judgment, everybody will receive the reward that they deserve at one time. Will God actually destroy the disobedient? According to Second Peter 2, 4, God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them unto chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. All the wicked will he destroy, Psalms 145, 20. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them, that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.8 No question about it. The disobedient, including the devil and his angels who sinned, will be destroyed. Matthew 25.41 This being true, surely it is high time to abandon all fastness regarding what is right and wrong. People had better stop letting their own foolish whims and egotistical notion guide them and pay attention to God's great book. And they had better do it now. There's not much time left. I want to obey all of God's rules. How can I be certain I will not overlook one? Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. That's found in Matthew 7.7. 7. 2 Timothy 2.15 also says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God. John 7, 17. So God said, if you just obey, do his will, what he says, then God will enlighten us and he will make us understand and, and know everything that he wants us to do or uh, he will, we will know his doctrine. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon, come upon you. John 12, 35. And as, as soon, according to Psalms 18, 44, as soon as you hear of God, you, shall, you should obey him. Soon as we hear, like today, if you are listening to this study, you are hearing of God. And if you hear God, it's better to react positively, to come to Him and accept Him. Because God said, if you turn your back to His teachings, it will become darker. Just like anything, when you, while you are listening, right now everything is clear to you. When you, when you, after this, when you leave, when you turn your back, and when you're not listening anymore, what you have heard becomes dimmer and dimmer and uh, eventually you might not forget it but you're not going to have the excitement and enthusiasm anymore to really come and respond positively to it. God leaves no room for doubt. He promises to keep me from error and lead me safely to all truth if 1. If I pray earnestly for guidance and 2. If I sincerely study God's word and 3. If I follow the truth as soon as I am shown. So the instruction of God here is follow the truth as long as it is shown to you. Procrastination is a theft of time, plus we do not know what will happen after you have heard of it. And besides, it might be uh, you might not have the uh, interest anymore if you do not respond at first. Does God count me guilty for disobeying the Bible truth that has never been made clear to me? According to John 9.41 if, if we were blinded, we should have no sin. But now you say, we see therefore, your sin remaineth. You see, if there is no truth available, there is no information available, well, God will only make you responsible for the truth that is available. Not for the truth that you, are, that you haven't known. Because if it's available, the question is, why didn't you look for it? Why didn't you search it? Nowadays, it's very, uh, we cannot say anymore that I cannot find the truth and I cannot see a Bible or there's no Bible to teach me. Because the Bible is all over. It's even in the internet. It's in your iPad. In, May, in so many hotels, when you check in a hotel, you'll find it, Bibles in your bedroom in some of these hotels. To him that knoweth to do good and that, that doeth it not, to him it be sin. It is sin. James 4.17 My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. So it's Knowledge is there, available, and you rejected. You refuse to look for it. You refuse to find it. Or when you found it, you rejected it. Then you are accountable for it. Jesus said, I will also reject you. Matthew 7, 7 says, Seek and ye shall find. If I have, no, if I have had no opportunity to learn a certain Bible truth, God does not hold me accountable. But the Bible teaches us that I am responsible to God for all the light knowledge of right. And I, and, uh, I have, for knowledge of right, I have and all I, I and listen will be and all I can have, I mean. Many people who refuse or neglect to study seek, learn, and listen will be destroyed by God because they have rejected knowledge. But God isn't particular about obedience on every point. 
and in small details, you see. Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt shall see the land because they have not wholly followed me, save Khaled and Joshua, for they have fully followed the Lord. Numbers 32, 11 and 12. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4, Ye are my friends if we do whatsoever I command you. John 15.14 Indeed, he is particular. God's people in the Old Testament times learned this the hard way. Those who left Egypt for a promised land of Canaan were 603,550 in number. Of this group, only two, Caleb and Joshua, fully followed the Lord, and they alone entered Canaan. The other 603,548 died in the wilderness. Jesus says, we are to live by every word of the Bible. There is not one word too many, or one word too few. They are all very important. When I discover a new truth, I wait until all obstacles are removed before embracing it. This is the best, isn't it? According to John 12:35, Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments, according to Psalms 1:19:60. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6.33 As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Psalms 18.44 No, of course, once you are clear on the Bible truth, it is never best to wait. In fact, procrastination is the devil's most dangerous trap. It seems so harmless to wait, but the Bible teaches us that unless a person acts immediately upon light, it quickly turns to darkness. It's very dangerous. Because God said, whatever light we see, if we do not act on it or accept it, it will turn to darkness. But isn't full obedience an impossibility for a human being? Matthew 19.26 says, With God all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Philippians 4.13 Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. 2 Corinthians 2.14 He that abideth in me, and I am in him, and I in him, bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. John 15.5 If ye are willing, if ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land, Isaiah 1, 19. None of us can obey in our own power, but through Christ we can and must obey. Satan, in order to make God's request appear unreasonable, invented the falsehood that obedience is impossible. See, we might not be able to pay, obey perfectly to 100% as God requires. However, if we are in obeying, whatever the shortfall might be, let's say we only reach 80% or 90%, the shortfall of 10%, the shortfall of 20%, from the uh, level it should be reached for perfect obedience, this is the grace, God's, Jesus, uh, the grace of God will fill it up. So you reach the the uh, the epics or the point of uh, complete obedience but as long as you obey so that's why let us we should not really deviate because we need to trust God we need to have faith a lot of people believe in God but their faith is doubtful because they do not believe him they do not have 100% faith if we don't have 100% faith, we will either disobey or we're going to deviate. For example, when Jesus says, 
when God said we had to go through this door to go out of this house, and you might be near a window, and the window is open, oh, I'll just come out of this window. So you come out of the window, you get out of, through the window. Are you obeying? Of course you're, you're going out also, but you didn't really obey everything. You, you did it according to your own judgment, uh, thinking that because the, because of getting out is the order, you all, you also went out, but you did it in the wrong way. When Jesus says, come to me, when Jesus says, Saturday, it does not mean Friday or Sunday or Monday or Tuesday. So, when Jesus says something, it is very important. None of us can obey in our own power, but through Christ we can and we must. Satan, in order to make God request, God's request appear unreasonable, invented these lies of obeying is not possible. What will happen to a person who willfully and knowingly continues in disobedience? According to Hebrews 10, 26 and 27, If we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for us or for sin. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fairy indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Hebrews 10, 20, 27. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. John 12, 35. The Bible leaves no room for doubt. The answer is sobering and shocking, but true. When a person knowingly rejects light and continues in disobedience, the light eventually goes out and he is left in total darkness. A person who rejects truth receives a strong delusion to believe that falsehood is truth. That's in 2 Thessalonians 2.11. When this happens, he is lost from that moment on. Oh, what a, what a statement. That's really strong. No wonder why I know of so many people who are well, well educated. Lawyers, doctors, and they even uh, attain high position in companies. They know so much, even the way they talk. Very intelligent. But simple things they cannot understand because they read the Bible, but sometimes they don't understand. And they argue with me sometimes, or they sometimes they justify what they're doing because God said so and so, God said such, and, and they, they, uh, they, they try to uh, give their own reason why. Uh, what they're doing is, is the right way, which is different from what God says. So, uh, maybe those people have already reached, uh, many of those people have already read or heard about the truth, but maybe they disobeyed or they were not willing to accept it. That's probably why they might have received that delusion already. And because it's the Statement and what God said, what Jesus said, or what God said, uh, does not, uh, or uh, it, it, uh, cannot be broken. And it happens, they receive the delusion. And according to this Bible, once you receive the delusion from God, you are already lost from that moment. And maybe you know about the truth, but you will never come back and ac accept it in your life. And be I thought love was more important than obedience, isn't it? Jesus answered, If a man love me, he will keep my words. He that loveth me not and do not keep my words and do not keep my uh, he that loveth me. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. He will keep my words. He that loveth me not, I'm sorry. Keepeth not my sayings. John fourteen twenty two twenty four. 
This is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. 1 John 5.3 Not all. In fact, the Bible says, not at all. The Bible teaches that true love to God cannot exist without obedience, nor can a person be fully obedient without love. No child will fully obey his parents unless he loves them, nor will he love the, his parents if he does not obey. True love and obedience are like Siamese twin. When separated, they die. But God isn't particular about obedience on every point and in small details, you see. Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt shall see the land because they have not wholly followed me, save Khaled and Joshua, for they have fully followed the Lord. Numbers 32, 11-12 Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4, Ye are my friends if we do whatsoever I command you. John 15.14 Indeed, he is particular. God's people in the Old Testament times learned this the hard way. Those who left Egypt for a promised land of Canaan were 603,550 in number. Of this group, only two, Caleb and Joshua, fully followed the Lord, and they alone entered Canaan. The other 603,548 died in the wilderness. Jesus says, we are to live by every word of the Bible. There is not one word too many, or one word too few. They are all very important. Does God really see and take note of me personally? According to Genesis sixteen thirteen, thou, uh, thou God seest me. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down and my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou art acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it altogether. Psalms 139, 1-4 But even the very hairs of your hair are all numbered. That's found in Luke 12, 7. Why is really, who is really behind all the disobedience and why? According to 1 John 3, 8 and 10, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever do not, do, doeth not righteousness is not of God, but of the devil. Satan deceiveth the whole world. Revelation 12, 9. It is very clear here in 1 John 3, 8 and 10 that there are two kinds of people in this world. Sons and daughters of God, those that obey God, and sons of, and daughters of the devil, those are the ones who disobey God. The devil is responsible. He, is no, he, he knows all disobedience is sin 
and that sin brings unhappiness, tragedy, alienation from God, and even destruction. With bitter hatred, he tries desperately to lead every person into disobedience. You cannot separate God from truth, because he says, I am the truth, John 14.6. You see this day whom ye will serve, Joshua 24.15. What glorious promise regarding a super miracle does the Bible give God's children? Philippians 1.6 says, He which hath begun good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Praise God. He promised that just as the works, as he works, worked a miracle to bring us the new birth, he will also continue to work in the miracles in our lives as we gladly follow him until we are safe in his kingdom. Revelation 22.14 says, Blessed are they that keep God's commandments, for they shall enter into the kingdom of God. John 14.23 So Jesus told the seekers for eternal life, Obey. John 14.23 also, obedience means surrender to and abiding in Christ. 1 John 1.7, the same as to be pure or clean. 1 John 3.3 3 means to submit to the cleansing of the blood of Christ. Do you want to begin lovingly obeying and, and following Jesus at once? Do you want to do it 